Today we got to talk about the life and legacy of John Blake and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that that corner sh <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, we need to acknowledge that John Blake has passed away at 59 years old. This news was first reported by Dean Blevins, sports director at News 9 in Oklahoma City. And it really puts into context for me a number of things. The first of which I want to start with a positive and end with a positive. So the first thing that I need to acknowledge here is that no matter how much we talk about John Blake, we cannot talk about him without saying he built the team that Bob Stoops ultimately won Oklahoma's seventh and last national championship with in 2000. But the way in which he did it is where the stories are and one of the reasons I fell in love with recruiting. So back in 1996, on January 21st, a story was printed in the Oklahoman that I went to go find so I could remind myself about the details that the NCAA was investigating John Blake and Oklahoma for improperly recruiting players, okay? I'm going to read from it here in just a little bit, but to set this up, John Blake went to Oklahoma, came back as a student assistant, and worked as a student assistant on the defensive line during a time when Barry Switzer and OU were humming right along. I think as a student assistant, he only saw Oklahoma lose two games and was part of that 1985 national championship team, and he got a ring for it. And then when Switzer was unceremoniously ousted after a series of incidents in 1989, we had Gary Gibbs take it over, and Gary Gibbs hires John Blake to coach defensive line. Not long after that, Jimmy Johnson, who had coached with John Blake and knew, was familiar with John Blake, hired him to coach defensive line for the Dallas Cowboys, and thus began a run of one of the best defensive lines of the 90s and some Super Bowls in there. And then he was hired to take over... OU after Howard Schnellenberger ran it into the ground in just one year, right? The 90s are not kind to Oklahoma fans. So Blake comes in and immediately starts recruiting like all hell. Problem with that is he's a defensive-minded dude who decided to do things like return to the wishbone, which on its face is not a bad thing to do. The wishbone still works today. There are still places that run it, and Air Force and Army and Navy run a version of it called the Flexbone. But when he announced that the bone was back, trying to rekindle the days of Barry Switzer, it ended with a quarterback that could not run the football and was really bad about turning the ball over, all right? But during that time, he also used, we think, allegedly, Barry Switzer and the Dallas Cowboys to help him build his case for why players should come to Oklahoma, for which I'm going to refer to a piece here that I want to read for you out of the Oklahoman that I just found to be quite fascinating. So let's begin on this where it says, uh, a member of the Dallas Cowboys also would be, oh, excuse me, let's start from the beginning. The NCAA forbids boosters contact with recruits unless such contact is unavoidable or incidental. This contact cannot be arranged by a school according to NCAA rules, and it can have nothing to do with recruiting the athlete to the school. All right. Switzer was apparently brought in. So Switzer, who resigned in Oklahoma in 89, is now considered a booster of the school because he no longer is employed at Oklahoma. Even though Switzer played football at Arkansas, he would be classified a booster of Oklahoma according to the NCAA definition, for which you can all understand why. A member of the Dallas Cowboys also would be considered a Sooner booster according to NCAA rules because he, quote, helped recruit prospects or promoted an institution of athletic programs in other ways. Going on with this, the Road Warrior, who still got a Twitter account, by the way, apparently broke in Sooner Illustrated that Switzer had come through. And in Switzer coming through, you know, and stating that much, we had this in the story. The Road Warrior bills himself as a columnist for Sooner Illustrated magazine. His report is maintained as part of the National Recruiting Center's unofficial Oklahoma recruiting site on the Internet. His Monday report said, quote, Row Warrior has learned that John Blake wowed recruits with surprise visit from Barry Switzer on Saturday. The recruits were in awe of the legendary Switz. 
as would be expected and were clamoring to have their pictures taken with him. Of course, the Swits obliged. That's pretty good recruiting tool, don't you think? Linda Cofton of Houston, whose son Cornelius Burton committed to Oklahoma on that Sunday after a recruiting trip to Norman, confirmed that Switzer was at one of the functions. When Switzer was asked about it, he's like, hey, sounds like the old is new again, and Texas fans are just mad because Oklahoma's out there out-recruiting Texas once again. Switzer, who was one of the best recruiters of all time and helped raise John Blake into the guy that he became, you know, I can understand that. But for Blake, it didn't stop at Oklahoma, right? He got fired after going 12-22. and 22. David Bourne has gone on record as saying, I probably stayed with him too long because I did not want to be the kind of program or build the kind of reputation among coaches as you only get one year to do this and then I'm going to fire you because of what Schnellenberger had done. So three years in, Donnie Duncan and he get the axe. Joe Castiglione comes in, hires Bob Stoops, and Oklahoma is back to rolling. But John Blake continues to roll on down, right? I mean, we have stops at Nebraska. We have stops in the NFL. We have stops at North Carolina, which became the most famous and the, and the latest of a number of recruiting violations that were alleged against John Blake. But my favorite is that Marcel Darius said that he was steered toward Gary Wishard, who is also deceased, as a way of, you know, acting like a runner, saying I should attach this dude to this agent. And this is also a time period right now when agents are really reaching out to guys that are projected to be drafted in the first 30 picks to say, hey, when you get done playing college football, perhaps you want to come, you know, sign with me and do their recruiting pitch right now before they start the season so that these relationships are established and you pretty much know what you're going to do at the end of the season especially as we're still having this discussion right now about whether or not the season ends on schedule or prematurely. But for Blake, it just kept getting more checkered, as they say. The man was so well-known among recruits, recruiting rankings, and high school football coaches that he was nicknamed Santa because of how much he could give you for a commitment. And that's an old school approach to college football recruiting. It is still seedy in some ways, but for the most part, everything is above board in large part because folks like John Blake started getting caught and getting pinched. I mean, this is a guy Butch Davis once said, I regret that I trusted John Blake on a number of occasions. And I've always thought that that was interesting. I've also always enjoyed the recruiting stories around John Blake, who when you look at his career, is terribly accomplished, having been a part of a national championship football team and a Super Bowl winning football team and gave rise to the Dallas Cowboys that I fell in love with and the ones that I still think about when I talk about Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, CeeDee Lamb, or even Amari Cooper to say nothing of that defense because without those teams, I'm not having that much fun. And without recruiting stories like that one being broken in the news, I'm certainly not having that much fun. John Blake, tremendous coach, tremendous recruiter, and gave rise to the national championship team that we all came to love. But man, what a story. 59 years old, rest in power, John Blake. Deuces.